Good morning. This will uh, hopefully be a relatively short video, but I want to talk a bit about the British royal family and the cancer diagnosis of uh, King Charles and uh, also that of uh, uh, Kate, uh, Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton. And I want to show you uh, a few slides uh, looking specifically at the uh, April 8th, upcoming April 8th solar eclipse, uh, how it will affect some members of the British royal family. And in particular, I'll go back to uh, uh, two slides that I uh, used in a YouTube video uh, last November when I was... Uh, also talking about the upcoming April 8th solar eclipse. So let me see if I can share my screen real quickly. And I just need to get rid of a few uh, windows panels here so I can see what's going on. And let's make this a little bigger. And here we go. Uh, cancer and the British royal family. A uh, very sad turn of events, uh, most recently. Okay, now, this is a slide from uh, one of my video presentations I did last November on the upcoming uh, solar eclipse and uh, people who could be impacted by that on April 8th. And one of the people I mentioned who could be impacted by that was uh, uh, King Charles. And we see here we have uh, Sun, Moon, and Chiron all conjunct at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries. Now this conjunction is not in direct opposition or square to any of his natal planets, but it is very strongly in opposition to his Mars-Pluto midpoint. Now, let me again reiterate that in astrology, nothing is fixed. Nothing is certain. This is like a weather report. And the way in which we might react to the weather, that's up to us. That depends upon our inclinations, our individual actions. So, you know, astrology gives a weather report. It doesn't say exactly what will happen. It's also in many ways like quantum physics, where you don't know the actual location of an electron until you measure it. And before you make that measurement, all you have is a probability wave function, uh, a wavy graph which says that maybe there's a 60% probability the electron will be found over here, but maybe... Uh, only 20% probability it's found in some other location, but it's not deterministic, it's probabilistic. And the electron doesn't have an exact location until we make that measurement. And it's pretty much the same way in astrology. We look at the transits, we look at the planets and other factors involved, and we can see things that there is a heightened risk for, a heightened possibility for. Uh, but the actual outcome, we can't say for certain until it happens. Uh, in this case, uh, Chiron, it can cause wounding, or it can cause healing, or it can cause a spiritual transcendence. Any of those things are possible. All of those things can happen at the same time. And we don't know necessarily beforehand which one we'll get, but we usually think that when Chiron's involved in its tense aspects, that there is a heightened risk of wounding. And there are many ways in which Chiron opposite this Mars-Pluto midpoint can work out, but among the many meanings of this planet, these planets, we have Chiron, wounding, Mars, surgery, Pluto, cancer. 
Again, that's only one of many possibilities. But as we get closer uh, to the solar eclipse, we see that this is certainly a possibility that in some sense, I'll say, has been chosen. Not that anyone would consciously want to choose to experience cancer and not to put the blame on the victim. <laughs> By using the word chosen, I just simply mean by use of that word that this is what is manifested. This is what has come about. So this is the situation that has to be dealt with. Okay. Now, there are some other very tense aspects in uh, the chart of King Charles on uh, April 8th. We have Pluto still making a pretty strong square to natal moon, it's waning a bit. We have transiting Neptune, uh, making squares to both uh, natal Uranus and natal uh, Jupiter, suggesting some uh, sudden uh, change in fortune here. And we have the lunar nodal axis is uh, conjunct natal Neptune. And that is intensifying things. And uh, things involving Neptune, they're usually shadowy or ambiguous, not clearly defined. So there are probably some aspects of what's going on which aren't as cut and dried as we would like. Okay, but at the very least, uh, this solar eclipse carries the potential of wounding King Charles in some way and affecting uh, his power or status uh, in life. Okay, now, the cancer diagnosis for King Charles was announced on February 5th, 2024. If we look at the transits on that day, you have transiting Chiron very strongly in opposition to natal Venus. And then transiting Venus is making a strong square to both. It's acting as a trigger uh, to things. And transiting Chiron is additionally uh, in very strong opposition uh, to his Venus Neptune midpoint and his Saturn Chiron midpoint. Interesting, we see Neptune involved in this also. So uh, unanswered questions, things not clear, uh, maybe even not completely clear on what the illness is or how it's working or spreading or manifesting or whatever. The involvement of Saturn, that can be past karma, past actions uh, resulting in wounding at this time. Okay, and additionally, we had transiting uh, sun and a strong opposition to Pluto. That doesn't last very long, but this certainly uh, triggers the revelation of uh, the cancer diagnosis. Uh, Saturn, transiting Saturn in opposition uh, to natal Saturn. Uh, this is waning at this point, but things were building up to that diagnosis of cancer. And again, past karma, if you will, in some way, uh, coming to light, uh, the karmic debts now having to be paid. Not to say that this is his fault or anyone's fault, but simply that stuff happens and uh, regardless of our actions, there are times we have to pay uh, the price or reap rewards, bring in the harvest, so to speak. So this is the unfortunate harvest. Now, if we look at the uh, April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse transit chart for the United Kingdom, uh, this is the second slide that I had talked about. Uh, last November, and in this one we have uh, Sun, Moon, Chiron, all strongly conjunct in the seventh house, making a very strong square. 
uh, to natal moon in the 10th house. And this suggested that the leaders of uh, the country, uh, leaders or uh, prominent personalities could be wounded, could be strongly affected by the solar eclipse. Additionally, in addition to the square to the moon, uh, the sun moon Chiron conjunction is also making a square to the uh, Pluto Chiron midpoint uh, in this chart. It's uh, within one degree of being exact. Okay, so this is reiterating the kind of uh, wounding, possible wounding we saw in the chart for uh, King Charles III. And so putting two and two together, there was really a heightened possibility of uh, wounding to the monarchy, wounding to King Charles. Now, also going on, we have uh, uh, Pluto, planet of death and transformation, in opposition to Jupiter in the 10th house. So someone's uh, luck is being eclipsed here. Someone's luck is being transformed. There could be some change in leadership. Uh, last November, I said this could affect the royal family. It could affect uh, politicians who'd lead the country. Again, we can't say exactly uh, that long beforehand what's going to happen because all we deal with are possibilities and probabilities. As we get closer to the event, uh, things often come into focus and we see what the issue is going to be. And lastly, the uh, transiting lunar nodal axis is conjunct natal lunar nodal axis. So there, this is a very intense time for the country. Okay. Now, if we look at uh, other members of the royal family, Obviously, we want to look at the chart for Kate Middleton. Uh, this one has a rotten rating of C, which means that we're not getting the data from direct sources. It's kind of secondhand data. I'm sure that the date of birth is correct. Uh, the time may or may not be correct, but... Uh, the date of birth is going to be close enough uh, for our analysis here. And what do we see? Well, that sun uh, moon Chiron conjunction, exact conjunction on April 8th, 2024, the time of the solar eclipse, it's going to be very strongly squaring uh, her natal sun and moon making a little bit wider opposition to her natal Saturn, but nonetheless strongly conjunct her sun moon midpoint and strongly in opposition to her Mars Pluto midpoint. Now being conjunct her sun moon midpoint, we expect uh, this cancer diagnosis to obviously be something that is affecting her very on a very personal level, uh, not just physically, but emotionally. And it's very interesting that Chiron is in opposition to her, Mars, uh, Pluto midpoint. Again, that one of the possible interpretations here is wounding, surgery, cancer. And this opposition is interesting because uh, Chiron Transcend Chiron is also in opposition to King Charles's Mars Pluto midpoint. Same astrological configuration, the same disease, cancer, the same kind of wounding. And they both had surgery. Okay. And in addition to all of that, we have Jupiter and Uranus going through her 10th house. So this sudden changes in her status, uh, they are conjunct 
natal chiron, more wounding, and making a square to her uh, ascendant. So there have been sudden changes in her life and her lifestyle. Now, it's possible that the all the squares and oppositions in uh, Kate Middleton's chart, uh, Prince, the chart for the Princess of Wales, that that might be uh, look a little more serious, a little bit more severe even than what's going on in the chart of uh, King Charles III, possibly. Well, be that as it may, what she has on her side is that she is younger. Uh, she's only 42, still has some youth in her. So her ability to bounce back uh, may be greater than that of someone older, uh, such as uh, King Charles. Uh, we just have to wait and see how this is going to play out. But I certainly uh, hope the best uh, for both of them. Now, if we take a look at uh, the charts of some of the other prominent members of the royal family, for Prince William, uh, looking at the transits during the solar eclipse, he is really going to be impacted quite a bit. Uh, the Sun-Moon Chiron conjunction is not directly opposite or square any plants as natal chart, but it is uh, making a strong opposition to his Mars-Jupiter midpoint and his Saturn-Pluto midpoint. So action, anger, frustration, transformation, there's a lot to deal with just in that. Now, additional things going on. Uh, we have transiting Pluto uh, squaring his natal Jupiter. So a lot of... Uh, transformations, changes in his life. Uh, let's see, we have transiting Neptune. Again, Neptune seems to be popping up quite a bit. Uh, it's making a square to his natal Neptune and uh, ascendant and to a sun. So there's uh, confusion about what to do, how to deal with this most likely and maybe uh, uncertainty about some other matters. And uh, let's see, Neptune is close to the cusp of his uh, third house of communication. There may be uh, uncertainties in how to talk about this uh, to others. And we've certainly seen that already. Uh, additional things going on is we have transiting Venus, making a square to his uh, natal moon. Um, you know, some emotional difficulties at this time. Again, probably difficulties in expressing things. This will pass soon. Uh, transiting Mercury is in opposition to his Pluto. Again, difficulty in uh, talking about this. And then the transiting lunar nodal axis is conjunct his natal Saturn and square his natal lunar nodal axis. So this is a very intense time also for Prince William, even though at this point he is not the one with cancer. Uh, he has to deal with a lot of very serious issues. And the way forward is not always clear, as indicated by uh, the tense transits uh, involving Neptune. And his own life is being transformed and changed at the same time. If we look at uh, Prince Harry's chart, uh, he is also being affected by the eclipse. Sun, Moon, and Chiron are in opposition. Uh, to his Venus, uh, that opposition is waning, not quite as strong as some of the others we've seen, but he's getting at the very least a glancing blow uh, from all of this. It's still within that uh, uh, two-degree orb. Uh, 
And so he is likely being wounded emotionally too. Uh, Trancing Pluto is still pretty strongly square, his natal Pluto. So he's already been dealing most likely with the trauma of his uh, father's cancer diagnosis and maybe other things in his life uh, we don't know about. Uh, transiting Uranus is pretty strongly conjunct his natal moon. So he's very unsettled by all of this. This can be a very anxious and nervous time for him. And uh, transiting Venus is a uh, square, his natal uh, Pluto. This is a more, a quicker moving aspect, so not too serious in itself. Uh, probably, well, this will probably exaggerate his uh, nonverbal feelings about what's going on making things a little harder to deal with. And just as was the case with his brother, Prince William, he has transiting uh, Neptune square, his natal Neptune. And that is going to add to the confusion and uncertainty surrounding the situation and what to do about it. So this solar eclipse, it's affecting uh, Prince Harry pretty strongly, as well as uh, Prince William, uh, Princess Kate, uh, King Charles III, and the whole United Kingdom. And lastly, we can take a look at the chart for uh, uh, Queen Camilla. And the Sun Moon Chiron conjunction is in her 10th house of status in society. And it is making a strong square uh, to her natal Mercury and a strong opposition to her Neptune Chiron midpoint. Again, we're seeing Neptune involved as well as uh, Chiron and Pluto. And this, uh, let's see, opposition. It's going to be in her fourth, uh, one, two, it's going to be in, yeah, her fourth house. So this is going to affect her, her family uh, quite a bit. It's her family that's being wounded. Uh, additional aspects we have going on. Uh, Pluto, transiting Pluto is making a strong square uh, to uh, her natal Chiron in the fourth house. So again, we can think of this as uh, cancer wounding her family. That's one possibility. Uh, there are certainly others, but this seems to be one which is on the plate for the, the main course, unfortunately. Now let's see, what else do we have going on? We have transiting Mercury squaring her sun, that's going to be uh, not lasting quite so long. Uh, transiting Jupiter in opposition to her uh, natal Jupiter in the fourth house, again, affecting the family issues between uh, sort of royal duties uh, in society, your professional work, and your family life. Uh, and we also have transiting Mars, uh, square uh, natal Mars. Let's see, did I see a Mars square in someone else's chart? Let me just go back a bit here. Uh, let's see, not that one. Don't see it there. Not there. Not there. Well, I guess I was just imagining that last one. That's certainly in Queen Camilla's chart. Uh, we do have that uh, transiting Mars, square natal Mars, which is going to 
uh, could be expressed as a, a need for quick action. It could be uh, personal anger uh, over what has happened. Not that it is anyone's fault, but you just get angry that uh, at the situation. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to us? Why now? Why are we being punished in this way? Okay. Well, let's see. That is the last chart I want to show. So let me uh, stop my sharing. And so this is what we see. Again, uh, it wasn't ordained, preordained from an astrological perspective that anyone in the royal family had to get cancer at this time. That was simply a heightened possibility, a heightened risk at this time at the solar eclipse and in uh, the weeks and a few months leading up to the solar eclipse. Uh, just one of many possibilities. But again, this is what has happened. So now we know what's on the plate and what has to be dealt with. It is also quite possible that at the same time that this is going on, there could be some healing of other wounds taking place, probably healing of some of the public rifts between uh, Prince Harry and other members of the royal family. There can also be personal spiritual transcendence occurring as a result of uh, these calamities. And those could be things that are happening that are very personal and that we're not hearing about. But we definitely know uh, that cancer is on the plate uh, for both uh, King Charles III and uh, Princess Kate. We know that the entire royal family is being impacted by this and that the country is being uh, impacted. Uh, we see repeated uh, aspects involving Chiron, uh, Pluto, Mars, Pluto midpoints, uh, aspects involving Neptune, indicating some uncertainties about the whole situation. Uh, we see that in all the charts for the most prominent members of the royal family, as well as the country of Great Britain, the United Kingdom. So as I say, beforehand, there were several possibilities before us as to what might happen. We certainly foresaw a greatly heightened risk of wounding uh, to King Charles in the country and then as things unfolded we looked at more charts and we saw why things were happening to uh, Princess Kate and we see how other people in the royal family are going to be strongly impacted by this so again that's what's on the plate that's what we have to deal with and there's not much perhaps that many of us can do other than uh, uh, pray for these people, visualize them being strong and healthy once again. And so with that mention, I'll just close with uh, what I'm sure many people now are thinking, God save the King. God save the king. Okay, well, that's it for this presentation. I just want to show you some of the astrology uh, surrounding these recent unfortunate events. And so for now, I'll just say so long and be well.